anybody, it is indeed a war against a nation. And the, the faster we take a decision, the better it is for us as a nation. And I still cannot understand why we cannot convene a meeting at Chibok. Because it's worthless being governors, and worthless being presidents, and worthless being chairman of local governments, and worthless holding political office if we cannot guarantee the safety of lives and property of the citizens of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So what is paramount is the safety of our people. Having said so, I want to join the rest of Nigerians in prayer at this moment that God in his infinite mercy will touch the heart of these people who are holding our children to release them that they may come back to their places. Today, gentlemen, marks exactly 23 years as your governor. You may recall that I became a governor of Imo State and was sworn in on the 29th of May 2011. But the election that brought me into power was an unusual election and unusual circumstances. It is the, for the first time that the entire political who is who in Imo State were not with me, except for the masses, the KKs, the Inagas, the bus drivers, the mechanics, the market women stood their ground and voted me as their governor with the support of God Almighty and the clergy. And to this group of people, I remain indebted and I say, God bless you for making this dream come true. Having emerged as a product of the wish of the people and having emerged under an unusual circumstances despite the supplementary election which was introduced because of Rocha Sokoracha. I emerged, I took an oath, that God Almighty help me that I may help others, honor me that I may honor others, give me that I may share with those who do not have, and empower me politically that I may touch the lives of my state, because I know on my own I can do nothing, but I can do all things through God who giveth me the strength. And that was the spirit with which I came in as your governor. Now, having been elected as your governor, I was faced with so many challenges. How, what would I tell Imo people if I fail? What face will I use to go back home if I don't succeed? Hence, the first thing I decided to do was to throw the path of sacrifice. And believe me, you must have no business with leadership if you're not willing to make sacrifice. So sacrifice became the name of my administration. And first, that saw me forfeit my 2.5 to 4 billion Naira security vote which is fund made available for governor, unaccountable, and to be used for whatever purpose the governor or the president wishes to do with it. That I gave up, that I may provide free education for the children of the poorest the poor in my state. That was still not enough. I realized that there was so much corruption in the system, and I decided to block the loopholes and the pipes of corruption in Imo State, which has attracted me a name as a man who is so tight-fisted with funds. But if I'm tight-fisted with funds, that it might be well with the children of Imo State, I so accept to be tight-fisted. <laughs> Let me say to all of us that that journey began with a cooperation from members of the House of Assembly, and Mr. Speaker and Honorable Members here present, let it go on record today that I couldn't have been a rescue mission without the partnership from the State House of Assembly. When I approached the House of Assembly, I requested that I want to start from the end, from the beginning. And I requested that the House should grant me a four-year budgetary plan. And to God be the glory, the House of Assembly of Imo State broke, make, made history by giving to me a four-year budget. In other words, all the projects that we started, that we need to do for four years, were started from the first year. And that is the result of what we are seeing, even where we are seated right now, which is called Imo International Convention Center. <laughs> Let me say to all of us also, that the journey with the House helped a whole lot, and with the partnership. And Barros lost the past, which gave us today what we have as Imo State and as Rescue Mission. I have declared that Imo State is the richest state in the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and I say so on daily basis. And there's evidence today that Imo State is indeed the richest state in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. 
My Bible tells me, let the weak say I'm strong and let the poor say I'm rich. And there's power in the spoken word. That prophecy I made and that speech I made has guided our development till death. One of the things that became secret of my success, and I must share it with my people, is the issue of breaking the protocols of due process. If there's any one governor who is not due process friendly, I'm guilty. Because I realized that the due process, what they call the due process, is actually not due process. It's an enhanced systemat systematic form of corruption that allowed the long route of channel to get all the funds to private pocket. When approval is made from Abuja in a due process, before it gets to Owerri, in the form of due process, it develops malaria. Before it gets to local government, then it has kwashoko. Before it gets to community, it has stroke and is dead. And so the money is gone. And what we hear is that there's no money to develop a state. This afternoon, I'll be, I'll be informing you more of what I have used the resources of the state and how far we have gone so far. So we blocked all the loopholes of corruption. We minimized the bureaucracy of due process to get job doing. Perhaps you may not know. As your governor, and I stand to say this, that there's no project in Imo State, there are over 1,000 projects that we today celebrate that I have not personally visited more than 10 times. I sleep virtually late at 2 o'clock, and I wake up before everybody before 5 o'clock. Usually I have less than four hours of sleep to make things work. Even in this hall where now, I left here yesterday at about 1 o'clock this morning. That is the only way to get the job done. So on daily basis, have I continually stop the contractors. I wake up contractors in the morning. I call them to make sure they get to the site to deliver the dividend of democracy to the people. But most people, ironically, may think that why I do what I do is because I want to get reelected. And something because I'm looking for a political future. Let me announce to you, gentlemen, all that I do is not to get reelected. All that I do is to write my name somewhere in the history of Imo State that one day a man called Rochas came to Imo State and he made a difference. That is my salary. So my salary is not in the profit of the job, it's in the glory of the job. At this moment, ladies and gentlemen, it might be important also to let you into some of the things that we have done that has helped to move our state forward. First is a 12 o'clock prayer. We introduced a 12 o'clock prayer, and today I want to thank all the teachers and civil servants and all Imolites who have kept faith with this 12 o'clock prayer. There's no 12 o'clock from Monday to Friday when all activities of government is not halted to give God Almighty the Creator 10 minutes of our time. And that has worked miracle. And somehow I cannot even explain where the money comes from anymore to do all the projects that we do. So there must be a hand of God in what we do in Imo State. Again, is the Imo Anthem. The Imo Anthem became a revolution that has cut across the length and breadth of this state, and every child can sing the song, indicating that there must be rule of law, and corruption must stop, and education must be free. And only then we can sing, Imo must be better. I want also announce to all of you that I have cooperation from Imo people. Those chanting of songs and those increments you pour on me on a daily basis has become the source of my strength. I'm grateful to Imolize for what they have done and how they have encouraged me for this period of three years. It might be important at this point, ladies and gentlemen, to look at Imo states yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And probably again, I'll let you into what will be my political decision and what I intend to do in 2015. But let me say before I say that, that unfortunately I believe, I'm convinced beyond reasonable doubt that Nigeria is not working and Nigeria is no longer doing well. But I believe Nigeria can work and it will take my generation to make it work. Let me, at this point, go back and as you view, I can explain to you some of the things we have done as a state. First, I want to say that we have released 
Imo State for the past three years collected the sum of 